Hey guys, welcome back to Dwarf Rule 16. I am your host, Javon, and today we're about for a brand new video. I thought I'd mix things up today, so we're doing a suite of benchmarks for the Intel HD 620, the bane of my existence. But you guys seem to love it a lot. Anyway, today I'm going to show you the setbacks that I, I'm always running on with this damn GPU. I'm running with a CPU of an i3 7100U, that's two cores and four threads. It has a base clock of 2.4 GHz and no boost clock. So that's never great for me when I have to test with this. CPU because the CPU actually becomes a bottleneck quite a lot in some of these games. We're running with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in dual channel memory set up to 2133 megahertz, which is quite nice. I do have an SSD to boot the system up as well as a USB SSD once again that has all first up we got GTA 5. We're running at 720p on the normal preset, which is practically the low preset for this, this game. I'm actually using advanced graphics to frame scaling mode to a one and a half, one and a half. So we're running at 360p realistically speaking. And we're just going to test out this early area in the game. I'm going to uncap the frame rate and add in the average FPS. Now what I've noticed so far already is that the CPU can't handle the integrated graphics in GPU. And so GTA 5 it seems to be a bit too demanding on the CPU. It's two cores and four threads once again. So that's going to cause an issue here. You'll see what I mean in a second. Even at 360p, I tried 720p as well, didn't really make much of a difference because the CPU is going to be the bottleneck regardless, but you'll see. It looks good right now. Can you play Can you play GTA 5? Yes. Is it going to be very great? I, I debatable, debatable. So we're using 7.3 gigabytes of RAM right now. So you see the second, we're running at over 30 right now, but as we get into oncoming traffic and whatnot, the frame rate is going to dip heavily. We're going to be in our 20s at certain points in the video as well. I, I, I totally thought I could make that. I, I, I couldn't. So it's going to be an interesting little trial run. My frame times are all over the damn place. But regardless, so far it's running. The 1% lows are at 26 so far. Average is like 40, but it's not going to stay there. You see what I mean? Like once we get into the busy street area, like right here, the frame rate is going to dip heavily. So no matter what we do for this, considering everything is at the lowest at this point in time, what we can do is probably disable shadows, but other than that, if you don't want to disable shadows, seeing that it looks way too bad with shadows, shadows off, this is kind of the frame rate you're going to get. And this is best case scenario. Once again, these are all running on SSDs. So yeah, running through Los Santos is going to be quite demanding, even so. But is it playable? Yes, it's a cinematic, cinematic playable, I would say, you know. I don't see where it's dropping below 24 too often, but regardless, yeah, let's move on to the next. And next up, we got Battlefield 4 running at 720p on the low preset. I do le have left the resolution scaling at 100%. I think that's fine for this one. And we're going to test this one out as well, which is also CPU heavy for the time. Going to uncap the frame rate and average of free as let's go. Let's go battle people, guys. So what you're going to notice for every single video I test, every single one of these, is that the GPU never hits 100% for any of these games. It's kind of crazy. It is insane. That being said, the game is playable here at 720p low. This is not a bad experience, not the worst. This is campaign, not multiplayer, which is much more CPU intensive. I don't really recommend playing multiplayer for these types of Battlefield and Call of Duty on this type of laptop. It's not going to end well because, like I said, the CPU is such a bottleneck for everything. You run into too many issues. Is he an enemy? The heck? That was weird. But I haven't dropped below 30 FPS, so this one seems to be a, a smooth experience at the 720p low. I can't really complain. Crap, he didn't die. He didn't die. He didn't die. And there's a lot going on, there's a lot of fire going on, and it still runs surprisingly well here. We only draw 15 watts of power as well from this, so that's quite nice. Oh crap, that's a grenade, that's a grenade, that's a grenade. We're only using 5.1 gigabytes of RAM as well, this isn't a very hard game to run by any means. Choice of the imagination, it's not demanding in- wait, did I kill you already? 
But yeah, it seems like for the campaign, uh, I'm out of ammo. I'm out of ammo. Pat, you, you, you gonna help me here? How did I not loot anybody I killed? That's crazy. But yeah, like I said, we haven't dropped below 30 FPS here, so I am, oh, I'm in, and this is a quite expansive area, there's a lot going on, as you can see, there's a lot just here around nothing, everything's just out in the open, the view distance is quite far, and it's still over holding over 40 FPS, but we're getting 47 FPS on average, I call that a win, I call that a win, but let's move on, moving on. Resident Evil 3 is going to be a hard one for us, but you'll see in a second. Anyway, we're running at 720p, we are using FSR's Super Resolution 1.0, we're using it set to the quality preset. Basically, we've turned everything else off to low, we've left Shadow Cash on, but everything else is pretty much off or at the minimum specs. And we're gonna jump into this one as well, uncapped frame rate, insert once again, let's go. So right off the bat, you can see we are have hitting an issue here with this. This was going to happen the second I step outside of in here. So I actually may I actually may have to go even further lower down. I legitimately will have to go lower down. I don't know why I thought for some reason I could run this at qual just quality. This is very demanding. Holy crap! This is more demanding than I expected it to be. So we're gonna quickly just scroll that one down. Do I have ultra performance? No, I have performance didn't do much 720p performance didn't do much I'm not gonna lie very disappointed in that very very disappointed oh I, th I think it's I think it's as you know I think it's no catching up oh, oh never mind never mind 720p performance pretty good pretty good pretty good pretty good pretty good stuff could be better could be better regardless this game is actually the only, the last game playable for the Intel HD 620 realistically Resident Evil 4 certainly is not and I think Village struggles much harder than this one does, if I'm being honest with you. So yeah, this is playable. Once again, I, I'm pretty sure I, I almost beat the whole game with this setup. So I have this rocket launcher just to see what happens. Could be worse. Could be worse. We're using 6.6 gigabytes of RAM. I think the game is performing admirably right now. But we are running into the area of when you try to play these newer games, these new titles, man, it just doesn't, just doesn't work out too well. But I can't complain. Dude, that, that, that's, that cutscene took way too long to come on. <laughs> Bro, the i3, man, the i3. This is a struggle, but you, you can get through this one. I feel like I actually played one of the Resident Evil 2 at like 15 FPS once back in the day. Legitimately just sat and played it for like 15 FPS to beat the whole game. The frame rate isn't the best though, so we'll move on to the next one and hopefully the next one will help us out way better. This, this is actually kind of disappointing if I'm being honest with you. I probably could have gone lower with the reds, but this is disappointing. And now we're at Titanfall 2, once again running at 720p on the lowest preset because I'm not a crazy person. Although I do think Titanfall 2 is quite optimized. We're going to uncap the frame rate real quick and now put in the average FPS and we're going to go. Yeah, like I think Titanfall 2 is very opti well optimized. So. It I don't know who's my it. Oh, geez. So yeah, it does take a second. It does take a second to load in, as the CPU is at 90% for a minute. I just sat there and waited until it loaded in. I'm using an SSD, so once again, it probably loads in a lot faster than most. Loaded in within a minute. I know it's running really well. Like I said, Titanfall 2 is very well optimized. Came out the same year as this damn laptop. I have no complaints here. This one runs really smooth at 720p low, to the point that I might be able to even put up a few settings. I wouldn't, but you could. We're only using 6.6 gigabytes of RAM as well. This one's going to be a smooth experience. I love this. Considering what I've been dealing with all, all this time, it hasn't been great. 
play Titanfall 2, guys. This one's great. This one's good for us. I don't know about anything else, but this one's good. Now, will it maintain 60 FPS? No. It'll definitely maintain over 30, though. And once again, we are at 720p. But as you can see, my frame rate is at 50 right now. It's saying the average is 66. It's not. It's not going to be in a second. Gameplay-wise, it actually may be, though. But let's move on to the next one because this one actually runs really well. We're getting over 50, 40 to 50 FPS. Here we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The resolution of 800 by 600. We have the resolution scaling down to the lowest. So I, I like that they updated that so that that can go down to the lowest during full screens. I didn't, you couldn't do that before. Interesting. But we're also running on the lowest preset right off the gate. Let's get into it gonna uncap the frame rate insert once again and let's go so this one is going to be hard to run i picked the hardest area in the game to run also the the whole city the hidden city which is not going to be great for us for our cpu especially you see the gpu is hitting is the bottleneck right now it won't be in a second <laughs> so let's get through here and yeah so i wanted to show you this here this is the worst uh, experience here right here this is the worst possible outcome basically it's going to be the worst right here worst case scenario guys worst case scenario after this expect the game to be actually quite playable outside of the city but i thought that this would probably be the best place to do so but yeah we're hovering about 20 fps honestly we're doing better than i expected to so i have to call that a win for us somehow we're using 8.4 gigabytes of ram it's not even using utilizing that much ram the cpu is completely pegged at 100 percent it's pushing itself to the absolute maximum here which is expected once again this is a very demanding game especially cpu especially in this city there's a lot of npcs there's a lot of foliage there's a lot going on here but yeah so i actually do like it because at certain points they're actually balancing themselves out. Oh, it looks terrible, but I've played it at worst. I played it. I played this with only eight gigabytes of RAM. I had a better CPU. I had an i5 7200U, but Intel H6 with only eight gigabytes of RAM, and it actually ran. And I played it till the beginning to the end. I actually even recorded it. No, I didn't. I recorded right. So, but it runs. We're still getting over 20 FPS. It hasn't really dropped. The one percent low is at 15, but I haven't seen it drop below that since then. We're getting about 25 FPS on average. I'd say that this is a win. So, like I said, outside of this area, you're probably going to see over 30 FPS. So this may actually be playable on integrated graphics for those of you who play a very on very low end hardware, which is most of my channel, <laughs> my subscribers. So yeah, I totally knocked that kid down. Regardless. <laughs> for the elitist this this is terrible this looks terrible it's terrible on my eyes it hurts my eyes it's... here we have genshin impact people still play genshin impact right right and we're running at 720p on the lowest preset i have the render resolution set to 0 0.6 and we're gonna see how that one performs on it why is crowd density on high all the same that's crazy anyway we're gonna also turn off bloom we need all the performance we can get. Now uh, we're gonna see how this one performs. We're gonna uncap frame rate and insert. Let's go. You know, for some reason, I feel like this has gotten way faster than the, the last time I tested this. Now, it's been a while since I tested this, so don't quote me on that, but you know. It is somewhat performing. Oh, okay. 1% of 8 FPS, that was terrible. That was, that was bad. That was bad. That was rough, guys. All right, so what we're seeing here right now, if you think 6.4 gigabytes of RAM, for what I, the video games I've tested today, I do notice that there's not a lot of RAM usage. I am very impressed by this. I won't lie to you. Like I said, we have issues with the CPU always being a bottleneck. The CPU here is a bottleneck as well, it, because there's a lot of wide, expansive areas in this game. So it's kind of just you just you just deal with it at this point. But it is running, and at 30 FPS, a nice 30 FPS cap, this would be very playable here. You might even not even have to drop as low as I did. Boy, that that was a terrible stutter. That's the worst stutter I've gotten all video. 
one FPS. That was a hard freeze there. But it is performing somewhat decently still, aside from that hard freeze. As you can see, it's still saying my average is 49, which is inaccurate, but... I don't feel like... I knew this would happen the second I decided to, like, get into the wide area of view distance, man. Rough. Okay, it goes really back up once I go from there. So once you're you're out of there, it does seem to stick around the 40 or 50 FPS range. So that average FPS is probably accurate. I didn't mean to do that. I should not have done that. Why did I do that? Why did I do this? Why did I do that? I don't I don't know why I did that. Yeah, exactly. As long as you don't look out into the expansive distance, look, the frame rate is actually quite high. I already talked to Paimon. I'm not going talking to Paimon again. We just need to get over there. But this one seems to be running quite well as well, all things considered. I do see an F a 30 FPS experience here with this one. Remember, the laptop only has 15 watts, man, and it somehow still manages to put out so much performance. It's quite impressive, really. I can't hit on it, even when the CPU is a bottleneck in practically every single test. Every single test. Oh crap, I'm out of... Now, when you're really in doubt and you really want something to play, you can always go back to the classics. It's Left 4 Dead 2. That's alright, today we're running at this one at 1080p. We have a mixture of high to low settings. I think this is pretty much, this is pretty good for what it is. And we're gonna leave it like this. And then cap frame rate. And insert. There you go. Let's go. Let's go shoot some zombies. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, when I look at this, I actually expected to get higher frames in this. I'm actually quite surprised. It's like, damn, we're not even getting over 60 at 1080p on Left 4 Dead, this game's so old. I totally just shot them in the back, sorry. I mean, this this is actually momentous. This is the first time I've actually tested Left 4 Dead on the channel. For the most part though, it does seem to be holding Alice, we're all the way. It does seem to be holding closer to 60, but it's not hitting si complete 60. Look at that frame rate. That's a heck of a frame rate. That is a heck of a frame rate. But at least the GPU is being fully utilized. That's that's a plus. That's always a plus. Always a plus. I I am moving. Okay, so okay, so obviously when there's a lot of enemies on the screen, that's a lot of CPU usage, so it's gonna hammer the CPU quite a bit when that happens. So it's probably gonna happen every single time. <laughs> there's there's no getting around that. There's definitely no getting around that. But hey, it runs. I can't complain. I'll let y'all handle handle them. You hear what? Oh. I guess that's what you heard. You know. Is it just me or is he here pitch damn black, bro? What the heck? What is in here? Bro, it was pitch black in there. Oh! Ow. Maybe. 
But yeah, this seems to be a quite nice. As we as it's saying, we're getting 61 FPS on average. It doesn't feel like it. It definitely feels that we're getting a bit lower, but it is very playable still. I am a bit disappointed at 1080p that we're getting this, but hey, 720p, we'd probably be getting over 80 to 90 FPS. So just keep that in mind. Ah, oh, I just got boomed on. Throw that, throw that, throw that, throw that. They're still coming for me. And yeah, that was, that was, that was interesting. Let's move on to the next one. I feel like that one was fine. So next up we have CS2, which I ain't gonna lie to you is a nightmare. Um, I don't, I don't know what 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 I was thinking with this one. I don't, I, I really don't like everything stutters like crazy. It's it's a disaster. Anyway, we're running at 720p on the lowest preset. We do have FSR set to performance mode. That isn't really helping me much here. And yeah, well. Let's, we're in training. I'm not even going to bother to do, I'm not even going to bother to do a, a actual match because look at this. This is not playable, okay? 100% CSGO is not playable on this. Just, um, GG's my guys, GG's. Good game, good game. I can't even actually aim properly because I'm, I'm not used to using this mouse. Wait, can I actually just use it? I guess I can. I don't know why I just didn't do that. Okay, interesting. It feels like it's moving a bit faster when I use a controller. How strange. I ain't hitting anything, okay? I ain't hitting anything. I ain't hitting anything. Bro, this is not great. I didn't ex honestly, I'm a bit blown away by this. Didn't I test this already? I'm a bit blown away by how this performs right now, if I'm being honest with you. Like, it is bad, dude. Bad. But I feel like it's because I now started, so it'll warm up a bit. It'll warm up, but even then, I want to uncap the frame rate and put in this, but it's like, guys, come on. What am I, exp what am I expecting here, you know? The CPU is completely paid at 100%. This is not playable on this, simply because I just don't think the CPU itself has enough power to run this. I, I'm pretty much gonna go with that. The CPU just can't handle this game, unfortunately. Two cores and four threads is not enough. I'm sure people have found ways to get this to run on here, but I totally messed that up. <laughs> but yeah, this this is not looking good. Uh, let's move on to another one. This guys, this one was this was bad. This once again, this is a bot match. Imagine what happens when I actually decide to play multiplayer. We'll try one more time. Try one more, one more. Yeah, especially when I walk with the other, even if the bots do, mostly with the bots, it's pushing the CPU too hard. Because when the bots aren't around, look, if I let them go, if I go, if I go a different direction, the frame rate should pick up a bit. But yeah, this is this is this is ooh, 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 ooh. this one ain't it, guys. This one ain't it. That's that's actually quite sad. That is actually quite sad. The CPU is just completely pegged. Can't do anything about it. We're using 9.2 gigabytes of RAM as well. Hey, one without firing a damn thing. Next up, we got Overwatch 2 set here on the PC. As you can see so far. We are running at 720p with a render scale of 75%. We have everything basically set to the lowest preset because we're going to need to here with this one and it's going to be painful. Gonna uncap the frame rate, insert, average FPS and let's go. So Overwatch is pegged at 100% CPU utilization the whole time. So nothing good will come of this is basically what I'm trying to say. Nothing good. Nothing good will come of this. Now this is with AI because I couldn't even find a game with normal 
people apparently are eight people still playing overwatch 2 guys i know people said that this game sucked but my gosh it took way too long dude for a sweet to stand to sit here and wait that long is kind of crazy now this is on an ssd and there are still stuttering issues that i used to have when i tested this on a hard drive when it first launched that's insane to me legitimately insane to me But nonetheless, we're just gonna pump around and walk around. And if you're wondering, I have been playing this game for like five minutes already. The hundred percent never went away. <laughs> like this, it's been on for five minutes. I actually started recording before, and then I stopped to record it again, which is why when you came on, you could see that my average FPS was already up. But it is running over thirty. But it's just that the CPU is completely paid at hundred percent the whole time. It's like, what what can you do? You know, what what can you do about that? This is on an SSD, by the way. Once again. I feel like I keep having to, to mention that. Our SSD is struggling this bad. So I don't know if this actually will load in after a while and help me out. But I can imagine playing with actual people is going to be 10 times worse. So I don't know if this is playable at all. So take this one with a grain of salt guys. Take this benchmark, grain of salt. I don't know about this one. I'm just walking around the map to see if we can load in stuff, but yeah. Heroes never die. But yeah, that's Overwatch 2. It runs. I can't. I mean, it is running. I, I, once again, it is running. And it is over 30 FPS at all times. Would I like it to be more? Sure. You know, I feel like it should be here. It's not, but you know. Is it playable? Well, when I'm shooting it, doesn't. it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world when I'm, when I'm shooting, so... I just have to take that, I guess. And let's move on to the next one. Oh my gosh. The online games have been really rough for me. I ain't gonna lie to you. Here we go, PUBG guys. Now we're running this one at 720p as well. Running with render skill of 70% on the very low preset. We're gonna hope for the best with PUBG guys. Will I be able to play this properly? Probably not because once again, we're running into a CPU bottleneck. So here we are, go, we're about to land. We're, you know, the CPU isn't actually doing the worst right now actually. I take it back, I take it back. Okay, when I look out in the distance, yeah, that's bad. It becomes a CPU bottleneck there, but up until this point, it's actually okay. Did I land with anybody? Because if I did, I'm dead. So this is how the game naturally plays. Now, there's no point in, I could say, like dropping the res once again. My C I think like the CPU is a bit too close. It's too close to the GPU. So when I dropped it, it would it would just be, a, it'd still be a CPU bottleneck. Or there would be very little alleviation is what would happen here but it is playing once again i think you need you actually need a lot more uh for these games to actually work properly for you i don't know man i feel like people manage to get it done all the same but i wouldn't recommend this not with this cpu it's very limiting but if you're wondering is it stuttering no it's not the frame time is fine as well. The frame times are going crazy, but it's, it, it, it actually does feel quite smooth, all things considered. It feels quite smooth. I can't really complain. Now I'm just going to run around like a fool for a second or two. And then get shot and die, probably. Because that's how, that's, how these, that's how these games go. That's literally how these games go. Let's run into, up into the foliage real quick. Let's see what we can do here real quick. We're getting about... Oh wait, I didn't even, I didn't even, I don't even think I really needed to put this on, but yeah. If you guys don't know, I, for, for, the, for the most part, I don't think I even have the frame rate over like 30. I don't think I do. I don't think I have it. And I don't think it'll matter. We're using 11 gigabytes of RAM though. Is this the, 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 the first game that's using the, the most amount of RAM, 11 gigs? I can't remember at this point. It's been a wild morning for me testing all these. 
But this is PUBG. I mean, listen. I would consider this playable until I run into a person and then die. This is not the worst thing in the world, but for competitive wise, it's it's not it's not great. It's guys, like, don't do this to yourselves. And I have to admit, those live testing all these live these live live games, the games where I had to actually sign into crap, annoying, very very annoying. But I know that you guys would like to play these types of games on the channel, so just that I'll test them out. But yeah, I'd rather not do this again. Not have to test these specific ones again. It's never great. That being said, I think we're okay. So, yeah, this is PUBG. We're not going to probably run into anybody, but that'll be the end of it. And this is also the end of the video as well. PUBG was the last one I put out here. What do you guys think of this type of format of video? Would you like to see me do more of this for more all of my hardware as well? Everything I get new, as well as trying to look for some lower end laptops and stuff and test that as well. I'll do so, you know. I would not recommend this laptop if you want to play games like PUBG and whatnot. GTA 5, even that is going to be rough because of the CPU. The CPU is a very limiting factor for this. Like I said, you can buy this for like 50 to 60 bucks on eBay sometimes without the SSD. It just comes without hard drives and stuff. And it runs, it does okay, but if only if you want to play older titles. Seriously, run, I, I, when you run into, you'll run into CPU bottlenecks more than GPU bottlenecks, and that's not great. Especially on the, the newer stuff. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to please leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys.